Hey guys and gals, Wanderer here. Welcome back to Kingdom Come Deliverance. So I just picked up my new horse, Kanthaka, I believe he is called. He is a tier five stallion that I got from the Ujit stables here. He's about, um, I think twice as fast. He has a speed of 40 versus a speed of 20 on pebbles and can carry about twice as much and has about twice as much stamina. So yeah, pretty good horse here. So last time we talked to Sir Hanush, and he sent us over here to Ujits uh, to go and talk to the Vicar. Now I'm going to take a little ride around here quick and kind of test this horse out, see how I like it. But then we're going to be going back and talking to the Vicar here about his hunt for heretics. Now Sir Hanush believes the Vicar is simply after his estates and wants you to get rid of him in any way that you can. Um, the Vicar here... Claims there are heretics, but who knows? I mean, technically, you know, Sir Goblin's kind of a heretic, but I don't know. Anyway, we're going to fast roll back over here, talk to the vicar, and see what he has to say and see if we can get rid of him. Uh, okay, here he is. What do you want here, lad? God save, Monsignor. My name's Henry, and I've been sent by Sir Hanish of Lypa. Sir Hanish, hmm. And why is he sending you? I'm to assist you in your search. Oh, I see. How considerate of him. Well, you've come at the right time. I need someone who'll go unnoticed among the locals. I'm sure Sir Hanush told you what I'm doing here. He said you're looking for heretics? Exactly. I'm seeking out the sores that inflict the body of the church. The rash of heretics. Voldensians. Dangerous heretics, one and all. Uh, who are the... Yeah, who are the Waldensians? Never heard of them before. Who are these Valdensians? I've never heard of them. Really? Then you've either not been paying attention in church, or the parish priest in Retai is too idle to read out the bishop's missive to the congregation. Um... Both possibilities are equally disturbing, but I'll allow you the benefit of the doubt, and assume it's the latter. But to answer your question, it's a heretical sect. I gathered that much, but what form does the heresy take? Look, boy, I don't have time right now to embark on theological disputation. Besides which, it's not something you need concern yourself with. Suffice it to say, they are heretics. Very well, Monsignor. How can I help you then? Excellent. Let's get right to the point, Henry. I know how to get to where the heretics congregate. And what's stopping you from going there, sir? That is to say, I know in theory. Welcome, Henry! The crux of the matter is this. We caught a heretic in Gutenberg who told us of the heretics in Uschitz. Regrettably, by the time he got around to describing their meeting place, he was already raving and hardly coherent. I see. So do you know where they meet up, or don't you? Possibly. His account was confused, to say the least. I have a record somewhere here. Can you read, boy? Naturally, father. Otherwise, Sahanish wouldn't have sent me. I see. It's a good thing at least the servants of the nobility are getting a suitable education. Some of their own offspring can hardly write their own names. Here's the record of the interrogation. From what I can make out, his description of the route starts at the local tavern. Once you've found something out, Come back and see me. I'll do my best, Father. Well, I'm not from Ujits exactly, so I don't know how well they'll accept me. That's good, because the last thing I need is one of these local good-for-nothings. I can't trust a single one of them. And they don't trust me either, but you're an ordinary lad with a likable face. If a bit simple-looking, you'll have a much better chance of learning their secrets. You flatter me, Monsignor. Very well, then. Are there any suspects? Everyone is a suspect. You can be sure of that. But I'll know more after I finish the interrogations. How did you conclude there are heretics here? We caught one in Gutenberg. He confessed to everything, including meeting up with others in Ujitz a few times. And that was all he told you? By the end, all his strength had left him, so he couldn't even put together a list. I'm guessing he didn't speak willingly. Of course not. 
Little wonder his strength deserted him in the executioner's clutches. It's a pity. He might have known more. My lad, guard your tongue. It's unwise to question the ways of Mother Church. Heretics are a conquer on the body of the Church. Do you know what's to be I'm done with such came. an ulcer? You take the hot iron to it and burn it out. It may hurt. It hurt me too to have to cause the man to suffer. But it had to be done for the well-being of the Church. Okay, well I can read, so I guess we'll be going then and checking it out. I'll get working on it, sir. God be with you, my son. Okay, uh, let's see what this thing says, and then we'll, I guess, try to figure this thing out. Okay, this is the record of the interrogation of the heretic Peter of Hredek. This account was written down by Master Borislav, ascribed to the Archbishop, recording the testimony given by the questioned heretic, whereby the interrogation was conducted by the very re Reverend Jan of Osek, Monsignor and Vicar to the Archbishop, and the lawful rite of torture was carried out by the town executioner, Francis, called Shanks in the town jail, according to the resolution of the town council. That is one big long run-on sentence. Holy crap, that was a mouthful. Um, so they tortured him and got testimony out of him, basically. That was done by the executioner. Of course, we met an executioner before, and he's actually was a nice guy. Now, it's not the same one, obviously, but um, that is kind of interesting. They don't just execute people. They also torture people for information, so that's part of their job. Imagine if that was just, like, part of your job. You have to torture people. I don't... I mean, I couldn't do it. Yeah, I think most people couldn't do it, uh, regardless of, you know, the fact that they... The church orders you to do it or whatever, you know. I, I There's no way I could do it. But, uh, yeah, the holy... The lawful right of torture. That's that's great. Uh, okay, so at first the captive heretic, one Peter of Hradek, did refuse to give testimony, whereupon the executioner was instructed to encourage him to do so by the performance of arts. Let it be said that the interrogated Peter of Hradek did long resist the executioner's persuasions. However, he did finally respond to a query as to the place of assembly of the other heretics known to him that they did meet in the town of Ujits. When the vicar then asked the prisoner to elaborate, that is, who they were and in what house they assembled, Peter of Heretic again fell into silence. The executioner was again obliged to exercise his persuasive act, which in due course the vicar ordered him to desist, for the prisoner was greatly fatigued. Whereupon he did s Man, I'm trying to read my book here. Ugh! What's where you're going, you lout? You nearly killed me! You, you guys saw it here. He ran into me, you know? Just saying. Okay, where are we at? Uh, so, in due course, the vicar ordered him to desist, for the prisoner was greatly fatigued. He was dying, basically, from torture. Whereupon, he did suddenly find his voice and begin to respond at length to the repeated query as to where he met with the other heretics. The vicar thereupon decreed that the testimony of the prisoner be written down verbatim. May the Lord forgive me for hearing these heretical speeches, which by my duty to Holy Mother Church I am bound to set down in writing this day. Thus spoke the heretic. I began my pilgrimage in Ujits, a den of iniquity where the people were drinking and fornicating, so I left that corrupt place at once. And at once I saw another abomination, the temple of the bride of the Antichrist, with the proud Babylonian tower. I went past it quickly towards the rising sun. I wonder if they're talking about me and Father Godwin having our drunken fornication that night. Are you really going to walk into me? Oh, okay, hold hold on, guys. We're, we're, we're going to move because these people are freaking morons. <sighs> I just need a place to just stand on my horse. Sit on my horse for a second and read, you morons. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, where are we at here? Blah, blah, yeah. Okay, so, when I left the village, I came upon a crossroads and didn't know which way to go. So I fell on my knees and prayed, and my prayer was heard, for the finger of Christ rose from the ground to show me the right path. On I went through this sinful land, and suddenly I heard the sound of a thousand-headed crowd at work, and I saw their queen and their towers. I journeyed further on, and all at once there rose from the ground the jaws of the behemoth, with his broken teeth jetted up to the heavens like the tombstones of the Moabites. So I went through the mouth of the beast, 
and by the road I saw the abode of the apostles Peter and Andrew. I was hungry, so I took the fruits of their labors and filled my belly. What now? So I went through the mouth of the beast, and by the road I saw the abode of the apostles Peter and Andrew. Then I left their house and saw two widows weeping and keening. I wept with them, and they let me sleep in their shadow. I went further along the edge of the world and saw the ribs of the great Leviathan washed up by the sea. Then I saw two bridges over the river Jordan, and the devil tempted me and tried to lure me to the one on the right. But I saw through his deception and went against his will. And then finally I saw it, the gateway to the Garden of Paradise, abundant with foliage. It was guarded by men of straw, but they saw I was a good Christian and let me enter therein. There were the last words uttered by the heretic Peter of Heretic, for he did then breathe his last. The vicar did then state that his death was surely the work of Lucifer to silence his tongue before the ears of the servants of God. The executioner thereupon took umbrage and made conceited objections for which his wage was cut by three Groschen and he was admonished not to repeat such remarks, especially in the presence of a servant of Holy Mother Church. The body of the heretic was buried outside the cemetery wall as befits so that it should not corrupt hallowed ground. Thereby the case of the heretic Peter of Heretic was brought to a close in accordance with Ecclesiastical Law. Okay, that's a new word for me. All right, is that all? That's all. All right, let me let me go over this once more time. One, once more time? One more time. Um, so they captured Peter of Heretic and they tortured him. He uh, held out until the very end, and then he said that he began his pilgrimage in Ujits, a den of iniquity where people were drinking and fornicating, so that was like me and, and Godwin, apparently. And he left it once, and at once he saw another abomination, the Temple of the Bride of the Antichrist. So the, the Temple of the Bride of, of Satan, a, a, the proud Babylonian tower. Towards the rising sun, uh, the sun, sun sets in the, rises in the east and sets in the west, right? Okay, so the sun rises in the east, so like this way, and it sets in the west, so if he went towards the rising sun from the tower. So he said he left Ujits. Well, you know what? Right there is uh, the tower. And he went east from here. Then he stopped by a house. Um, someone by the name of uh, Peter and Andrew, right? Let me, let me see here. Began my pilgrimage to Ujits, a den of iniquity where people, yep, okay, so I left the crap place at once. The temple of the Bride of the Antichrist, so that the temple is like right there. He was As he was leaving, he saw the temple uh, with the proud Babylonian tower. I went past it quickly towards the rising sun. When he left the village, he came upon a crossroad and didn't Ow. know which way to go. Okay, he fell on his knees and prayed, and the finger of Christ rose from the ground to show him the right path. Okay, let's go out towards the east, towards where the rising sun would be. Okay, 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 so he said that uh, the finger of Christ rose from the ground and showed him the correct way. And this is a shrine. And it's, it's a Christian shrine, obviously. So perhaps this is the finger of Christ. We can read it. Oh, this is, uh, these are like founders or whatever. Okay. So... I'm going to say it's probably this way. So he went this way. He fell to his knees there and prayed and went this way. And then he eventually came to the house of uh, Peter and Andrew. Now let me see here. Once again, let's read this. So on he went through the sinful land and suddenly he heard the sound of a thousand headed crowd at work. And I saw their queen in their towers. A thousand headed crowd and he saw their queen and their towers. What are those? Probably nothing. It's a beehive. Oh, you know what? You know what? That could be like a riddle. Maybe? Let me see. It says, um... Heard the sound of a thousand head crowd at work, and I saw their queen in their towers. So, this, you know... Beehive, that would, that would make sense. The queen, you know, queen bee. In the towers, these are like towers. Okay, that that actually makes sense. I'm going with that, guys. We're going with that. All right. Uh, next. Okay, queen. Their towers journeyed further on, and all at once there rose from the ground the jaws of the behemoth, and his broken teeth jutted up the heavens like the tombstones of the Moabites. 
Okay, went through the mouth of the beast. Okay, so we're looking for something that resembles uh, the jaws of the beast. The jaws of the Leviathan on the road here, I'd, I'd assume still. Hmm. Interesting sight. Couldn't, couldn't be this, could it? Could this be what he's talking about? This seems like a bit of a bit of a far stretch, but maybe. Okay, what else does it say then? There rose from the ground the jaws of, of the behemoth, and his broken teeth right up the heavens like the tombstones of the Moabites. So I went through the mouth of the beast, and by the road, I saw the abode of the apostles Peter and Andrew. Okay, by the road he saw Pe the the. Peter and Andrew's place is here, so... There's kind of a road here. I, this is kind of a stretch, though, man. I don't know if this is right or not. Can I actually go inside of here? I can. Uh, there's nothing here. Yeah, I don't know. This is kind of a stretch. Let's... let's that might not be it. Let's keep going. Can always backtrack if that's not... If that is it, but I don't... I don't know. It doesn't seem that obvious to me. Wait, what is this? I was riding along here, and this guy... Came out of nowhere here. Duh! All right. Uh, Come on, turn horse. Thunder. Yeah. Well, Kunda yourself. Sea axe, huh? Not worth very much. Said something about the old woman who sent him something. Can I not loot this guy? Oh, there we go. Yep. Mercy kill. See ya, bandit. Alright, so I was kind of looking around, guys, and I sort of found some stuff around here. Nope. Bant's gotta die. Okay. As I was saying, um, I was kind of looking around around here because I, I didn't really find what I was looking for. So, um, I think maybe I went the, the wrong way back there. So, previously, I went... Right over here is the, uh, the Finger of Christ, right? And I went this way. And then I think up here is where we found the other thing. And so, uh, but anyway, I couldn't find what I was looking for. Could not find Peter and Andrew's house anywhere. I didn't see it. So I kind of went and looked around over here a bit. And I came to this little area over here. And I see there are two bridges over here. And let me show you here. So it says, I went further along the edge of the world and saw the ribs of the great Leviathan washed up by the sea. Then I saw two bridges over the river Jordan and the devil tempted me and tried to lure me to the one on the right. But I saw through his deception and went against his will. So he went to the left. So there are two bridges that he saw and I'm pretty sure there are two bridges over here. So there's one. Yeah, there's two bridges right here. Okay, so maybe he was coming from over here and he came to the two bridges here. So, because that's the question, right? Was he going this way or was he going the other way? So, um, if the camp that he stopped at or if the house was over here somewhere, that would maybe make sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense that he was on this side though. So he went along the edge of the world and saw the ribs of the great Leviathan washed up by the sea. Okay. I, I want to see if I can find backtrack here and find the ribs of the Great Leviathan. That wouldn't be it, would it? I mean, it's possible. This guy was cl is clearly either drunk or delirious and just making stuff up to try and save himself. I guess this could be the ribs, maybe? Two? I don't know. Doesn't say across the stream here, but then again, maybe it wasn't worth mentioning either. Alright, so let's, let's assume it's... Come on, horse. Let's assume it's this way. And he took the left path, crossed on the left path, and then kept going on that path across the river over here. So he continued along the edge of the world, and then he came to two bridges. The devil tempted him to take the right path, but he took the left one instead. Right? 
Right, so the devil tempted me and tried to lure me to the one to the right, but I saw through his deception one against his will. So he went to the left, and then he finally saw it, the gateway to the garden of paradise, abundant with foliage. It was guarded by men of straw, but they saw I was a good Christian and let me enter. Okay, so we're looking, going to the left, then we're looking for the gateway to the garden of paradise, abundant with foliage. What do you want here, eh? What? I'll kick your ass here. I'll slaughter. Uh. Fucking hell. What do you want about then? Ah. Carpenter's axe, okay, why not, sure. Okay, so looking for the gateway. So that was like what garbed in foliage is what he said. Is it like this way? The gateway to paradise? Hmm. It seems I found oh. it. This is it. We did it, boys. I never, I never figured this stuff out. I never can figure this stuff out myself. So hey, good for me. Didn't have to actually look it up. All right, got a wooden cross here. A cross, nicely carved. Hmm. Someone in the village might recognize it. Is that all? Oh, there's a chest here. All right, let's lockpick this bad boy. Some Groshin and some wool fabric. Okay. That's not super helpful. Okay, I don't see anything back through here, really. I guess I could look more, but that would be that would be pretty silly if they hid some random thing back here. Oh god, no, I can't get back through there. I don't see anything really of note here besides that. Okay, that that must be my clue then. I must have to go and see if someone recognizes the cross. Back in uh Ujits, right? Let me see here. Yeah, find out who owns the cross from the assembly place. Alright, well, by village I'm assuming they mean Ujits. Yeah, okay, yeah, find it, yeah, okay. Let's just, uh, let's just fast travel back there then. Okay, so if anybody would recognize the cross here, uh, maybe Godwin would, since it is a cross after all. He is the holy man here, and since we know Godwin quite well, maybe he'll know what this is all about. Maybe he'll have more information for us, so... Let's go and talk to him, see if we can find him. Oh, Godwin. Up oh, there he is. My respects to you. He sounds different. Oh, yeah, here we go, the cross. Father, I wonder if you could tell me whose cross this is. Hmm. I do know, but I'm not sure I can tell you. I don't understand. Why not? People said they saw you talking with a the vicar. They're afraid that Sir Hanu sent you here to help him. Uh, not really. That's not how it is. And how is it? Sir Hamish sent me to find out what he wants, and to get him out of here if possible. Well, then we share the same interest. But I'd still prefer it to end with nobody burned at the stake. You and me both. That's good to hear. Where did you find the cross? Let's do a deal. I'll tell you where I found it, and you tell me whose it is. Very well. Tell me. I found it in the woods. It looked like people met there. There were other things, candles, a cloth, and so on. Damn it! That really does seem like... That the vicar is right to be looking here. It surprised me, too. So whose is it? The cross is definitely the Bowers, I remember that. But that just can't be. I can't believe it. If they really are heretics, though... What do you want to do? I don't know. But I'll do anything in my power to prevent a heretic witch hunt taking hold here. I see. It wouldn't make Sir Hanish too happy either. My thoughts exactly. But the question still remains what to do about it. The vicar won't give up till he's found what he wants. You know what, boy? Before we do anything else, we ought to make sure whether there really are heretics here. 
What do you propose? That's simple. Listen to how they say their prayers. But how can I listen to their private prayers? I don't suppose they'll be praying that way in the church. Certainly not. In the church they'd pray the usual way. But at home it's a different matter entirely. I know they meet at the farm in the evening with all the domestics. They'll surely be praying then. All right, but how can I listen in? I don't know. Crouch beneath the window? Climb up in the loft? That way you'll be sure to hear everything said in the main room. What do you know about the Bowers? When I think about it now, they're a little peculiar. What do you mean? Well, they do rather keep themselves to themselves. They attend mass, true enough. They leave the moment it's over. And I've never seen them at a dance or a celebration of any kind. But on the other hand, they give more alms to the needy in the village than anyone. I can't deny them that. Where did those Bower folk come from? I don't really know. Uh, I've never spoken to them much, but they've not been here long, only two or three years. Hmm. And the cross? Did you consecrate that for the Bowers themselves? No. It belonged to the family who lived on the farm before them. That was quite a sad story. Huh, and he doesn't tell a story. Okay. Uh, I'll get on with it, I guess. Right, I'll get on with it. Okay, so we gotta go and, uh, sneak into their house. Um eavesdrop on their praying okay oh it's all the way down here okay so we're gonna ride down here and sneak in there for their evening praying now we're it's almost evening now so I guess we'll just go ahead and go I'm gonna go ahead and ride down there guys and I'll see you in a little bit let's try going around the outside here So here's the house right here. Oh, here we go, here we go. Yeah, I use a ladder to go upstairs. Ah. I could try listening from here. Okay, okay, there we go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are bound to receive from thy bounty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. They... They took old Wenzel to the presbytery today. His farm is nearby. It's only a matter of time before... Before th they come for me. I know. And what are we going to do about it? That vicar is baying for blood, the beast. He will devour you alive. I do not intend to do anything about it. I shall not waver from my faith, nor turn my back on it. My dear, what on earth are you saying? If they come for me, I will go quietly. And I will not lie. Are you serious? Don't you know what they'll do to you? I can well imagine. But I am resolved. The Lord have mercy. Do not fear. I surrender to God's will. And I do not condemn you if you decide to leave. I'll stay by your side. Although I'd rather that you decided otherwise. I know. And you have no fear, my brothers in Christ. Stay true to God's plan as I shall. Go and spread the true faith amongst all good folk. I'm sorry, I wish there was another way. You should eat your supper and depart right away. Who knows? 
You may come for us at dawn. So, they're like a different sect of Christians, I guess? So what is that? What does that mean? Okay, talk to Father Goblin. Okay. Yes, yeah, let's talk to Goblin. He'll fix this, man. He'll know what to do, hopefully. Okay, so it's a new day. Let's go and see if we can find Father Goblin. Yeah, I might have to wait for an hour or so, but let's see if we can find... Oh, there he is. Okay. Oh, wait, this is the... This is the vicar. Um, so where is... Uh, where is Goblin at? Because that's I want to talk to. Is he out practicing with his sword? Maybe he's up top. Probably he's up top. Let's go ahead and wait for like an hour. Father Goblin, you know, he likes his late nights, so he might still be in bed. How are you, Henry? God almighty. Did something happen to you? Did someone steal your fancy clothes? So, I went to check on the Bower farm, and I don't have good news. Do tell. They most certainly are heretics. At least as far as I can tell. Are you sure? What did you hear? Oh, the prayer was led by a woman. Oh, man. Well, for a start, the evening prayers were led by a woman. That is certainly unusual, but nothing conclusive in itself. But that's not all. They're afraid the vicar will be coming after them. Who wouldn't fear that? That swine finds fault with everyone. Well, it's not like you'd have to try too hard. Mrs. Bower plans to confess everything. Confess what, exactly? Most likely her faith. The people of the farm were trying to discourage that, but her mind's made up. Oh, good lord, that's all I need. What am I to do? I don't know, but we have to help them. You're quite right. You have to talk them out of it, Hal. You must convince them to run. Me? And what am I supposed to say to them? I'm the one who's been hunting them down. So who better? Do you think they'll listen to me? I'm a priest. If there's anyone they can't abide, it's me. You have to try at least. For their own good and for yours, Hal. All right, why not? You're right. Someone has to help them. I'm glad you see it that way. Now hurry. You never know when the vicar might come for them. Okay, so I gotta persuade them to leave. So we go back... again. A lot of running back and forth this quest. I'll see you once we're back there. Whoa. Okay, here we are. Is this... these are the people I need to talk to? Is this one of them? Villager... Villager, how's my how's my charisma here? My charisma is very very low. Maybe I can intimidate them though. I don't know. Need a bath, man. Need to find a bathhouse. All right. Um, I gotta talk to these people. I'm trespassing, but whatever. I gotta talk to her. Mistress Bower. What is it you need? I've come to ask something of you. Have you? And just who are you, young man? That doesn't matter. The important thing is that I want to help you and your husband. I admit that I'm a little confused. You've come to ask me something, but at the same time you want to help me. What's going on? I want to ask you not to confess to the vicar. Just take your husband and get out of here while there's still time. I have no idea why you're so taken with my fate or how you found out about my intentions. But I'll tell you one thing. Changing my mind is out of the question. I won't betray my faith, nor my brothers in Christ. Oh, speech check that we're not going to pass. Alright, you won't be the only one to suffer, though. You speak of your brothers in Christ, but what about the people in Ujits? What of them? 
Most of them are idlers, gamblers, adulterers or outright thieves. Maybe they aren't folk after your own heart, but does that mean they aren't worthy of salvation? Isn't that up to God to decide? I'm just describing, not judging them. That judgment does indeed rest solely with our Lord. But if you confess, all those people will be in danger. God knows how many of them will end up burned at the stake merely because of the vicar's dislike. The vicar will be the one to send them to the flames, not I. Am I to blame for the sins of others? No, but you can prevent more sinning. Isn't that your mission? To keep people from sinning? I'm sorry, but I just can't act otherwise. I've had enough of persecution, of living in fear and hiding who I truly am. I want to live and die in God's truth, not falsehood. But that's madness. You'd better go. And although I don't quite understand your motives, I thank you for your words. Okay, well, we tried. Uh, low speech skill. I guess they're gonna die. So what now? All we can do now is tell the vicar and... That's that. I'll try talking to Goblin one more time, but I doubt he'll have anything to say about it. You, unless Andrew? he wants to go himself. Yeah, I tried talking to Mal, but it was no use. I tried to talk to them, but it was hopeless. That woman is adamant about turning herself in. It's all the same now, Henry. I got word from the presbytery that the vicar's getting ready to catch them. God almighty. What are we going to do? There's not much we can do now. No one's going to stand in the vicar's way. They're taking them to Kutenberg now, where the pyre awaits them. I am sorry, but after all, they had a chance to flee. They knew what fate was looming. I know, but still. Don't let it trouble you. They were decent, but people who throw their lives away like that can't be right in the head. Can they not? I don't know. They have their truth, and they cling to it. Tooth and nail, which is all too uncommon nowadays. Now stop worrying about it and have a drink. You'll drive yourself insane if you keep brooding. Okay, well that's depressing as hell. So... The, vi the vicar is inside. I keep calling him the viker. The vicar is inside. Let's talk to him and I guess we'll let him know to go and burn some people. Hey, hold on, man. I'm trying to talk to you. What is it? God be with you. I found them, Monsignor. Pardon me? I found the heretics. Really? And who are they? The Bauer family and their entire household. Hmm. Well, I expect you to give me some evidence. In the last few days, I've been hearing how practically everyone here is a heretic. I found that place the captive heretic talked about, and I found a family cross there. It took a bit of asking around, but I learned it belongs to the Bowers. Their farm isn't far from here, to the north. And then all I had to do was go there and do a little spying. What of it? What did you hear? Hmm. I mean, I don't know. It sounds like they're the same religion mostly. as they're, they're Christians, but I don't know. Surprisingly, nothing suspicious. Nothing? And how are they praying? Normally. They said the prayer, just like anyone else. And they said nothing at all that was out of the ordinary? Not a word. Hmm. That's odd. They are the only people around here who seem likely to be heretics. Well, I suppose I'll have to deal with this matter myself. I have no further use for your services. You may go. Um... Yeah, what about a reward, man? Um... Father... Shouldn't I be rewarded for my efforts? My boy, I sent you to find heretics, and you came back empty-handed. I told you what I found out, didn't I? For all the good it did me, I'll no longer be needing your services. And in the future, remember, not everyone wants to hear the truth. Really? 
I kind of want to find out what the other options are now. Like, if I were to... I don't know. I don't know, guys. Like, do we get to see a pyre burning? Well, let's, let's talk to uh, Goblin again and see... Uh, maybe I have something else to say to us, I don't know. Nah, nothing else. That's it. You just feel the quest. Okay. Well, that sucks, but at the same time, like, I... At least it's not Henry's fault. Okay, so, um, what's the quest we actually have to do here? The quest we're actually supposed to be doing, the main quest, is to go to Sasau and speak with Ulrich and then speak with a whole bunch of other people over there, too. Okay, guys, so we're going to fast travel over here. I think I'm going to wrap up the episode here for this one, and we will do Sasau and the main quest, all that glisters or glistens, whatever it is, in the next one. Got an attack on the road here. I'll leave you with this, this little fight here, I guess. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, everyone. I will see you next time. The best you can do. You'll die for that! Fuck! Here! Go, Pete! Take that! Yeah.